So let's go through the no calculator section of your practice exam. So with this first one, we're solving equations. So with any questions where you're solving for equations, what you should always end up with at the end is whatever your variable is equals some number. So you get should get this solution out, which means you should also always be able to check your answer with these, which I would highly recommend during your final exam. So let's look at how to solve these. So if we have this x plus 7 equals 15, so it's all about isolating our variable. And what we need to do is get that 7 away from it. So what we can do is subtract 7 from both sides. And then that'll leave x all alone on the left-hand side. And then 15 minus 7 would leave us with an 8. And then what you could do with each of these is you could check the solution by plugging it back in. So plugging in 8 where x was, plus 7, and then see if it balances, which we do get balance out. So um, with part b, 3x equals negative 18. So we have something multiplying with x. So to move that away, we would need to divide by 3. And then we would just have to do that by both sides. And that would leave us with x equals, then negative 18 divided by 3. So negative divided by a positive would leave us with a negative, and then 18 divided by 3 is 6. And you could plug in 6 where x is and make sure that it balances. With this one here, we have a denominator, and there's a few ways we can deal with that. But um, one method that we talked about in class is multiplying both sides of an equation by the least common denominator, which in this case we just have one value, that 3. So if that least common denominator is 3, what we could do is multiply both sides of the equation by 3, we'll multiply by 3, multiply by 3, and what that'll do is uh, it kind of wipes out any denominators that you have. So on the left-hand side, if we're multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3, it just cancels out. So we'd be left with this negative 4x equals, and then on the right-hand side, negative 4 times 3, which is negative 12. And then it's just easier to solve once you get rid of all those denominators. So then we can divide by negative 4, and that'll give us x equals negative divided by negative will give us a positive. So then 12 divided by 4 is just a 3. And again, if you plug it in, it'll all work out. All right. With this case, this one has our variable showing up on both sides. So what we want to do is that step of moving everything with our variable to one side and everything else to the other. So what we need to do is move a term with a variable. So that'll look like either subtracting both sides by 3x or subtracting both sides by 2x. Either way will work. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2x from both sides. Um, and so then 3x minus 2x would just leave us with 1x. So I'll be a positive x. And then we still have that plus 7 equals. And then on the right-hand side, that'll turn into a 0. And we'll have a negative 5. And then it's like the problems that we saw up above there. Um, here we're adding 7, so we'd want to subtract 7 from both sides. So I'll leave us with x equals, and then a negative 5 minus 7 would be a negative 12. With part e here, we have a number multiplying with multiple terms that are adding together in the parentheses. So this rings through that distributive property which means we distribute that value of 3. So how that would look is we'd have 3 times x, and then plus 3 times 2, and then that equals that 27 on the right-hand side. So this would be a 3x plus 6 equals 27. And then now these cases where we're mixing, like we have our variable x that we want to solve for, and it's being multiplied, and something's adding on the outside, you want to take care of any addition and subtraction first. So with that 6 adding on to it, we want to subtract 6 from both sides. So subtract 6, subtract 6. So that would leave us with 3x equals 21. And then we want to do our division by 3. So that would leave us with x is 7. And again, go back to the original 
form of the question and imagine if you plugged in 7 would that work so 7 plus 2 is 9 times 3 is 27 so it all works out all right with this one with a lot of things going on so we want to simplify both sides of the equation first so what you could do is just kind of you know you could even go as far as let's just ignore what's going on over there and just simplify the expression that we see on this left hand side so something we'll need to do is distribute the 4 so what that'll look like is we'll have a 4 times 3x minus a 4 times 1 and then we have that plus 11 on the outside so this will be a 12x minus 4 plus 11 and then we have these like terms 4 and 11 so we can combine those so this will be a 12x and then plus 11 minus 4 which is 7. so that simplifies that left hand side then what we could do is basically just ignore what we've done over here for a little bit and focus on simplifying that right hand side so we're going to distribute that 2 in so we'll have this 2 times 6x plus 2 times 5 minus 8 so that'll be a 12x plus 10 minus 8 and then just combine any like terms so we get to 12x plus 2 and that's all simplified there so So then from here, what we're going to do is move our variable. So what we would do is subtract 12x from both sides. Subtract 12x from both sides. And what that will do is it'll cancel on the left-hand side, so we'll just have 7. And then on the right-hand side, it also cancels. So what we end up with here is something without a variable. And what that means is that there's two possibilities. Either we have infinitely many solutions, so like everything's a solution, or we have no solutions. And it comes down to the statement that we end with. So what we have here saying 7 equals 2, well, that's a false statement. That is not true. So if we get a false statement at the end, that means there are no solutions that would make this equation work. Um, if we ended up with something like 7 equals 7, so if it was a true statement, then we'd have infinitely many solutions. Or you could say like all real numbers. So that's solving equations. So just be careful following those steps that we talked about in class. And then during the exam, be sure to think about checking your answer at the end, um, just to make sure it does in fact work when you get that solution out. All right, plotting points. So here we're given some coordinates and a blank grid. So something we'll need to do is set up our axes. So you'll always want to have a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. And then always label these. So horizontal is X and then vertical is Y. And then also label a scale, which Taking a look at our numbers, they're all pretty small, so I think we can work with a scale of 1 here and 1 here. You can label more if you want to, but just setting the scale for x and y, if you do this minimum, that's enough information. But you have to do it for both x and y, because you could use different scales depending on the numbers you're seeing. So it's important to set both, but we're going to do 1 and 1. All right, our first coordinate is giving us an x value of 1 and a y value of 5, and it's all positive. So what we're going to do is go to x equals 1, and then go up to x, uh, y equals 5, and that maps us to our coordinate. So that's going to be a. For 3, negative 1, we're going to x equals positive 3, y equals negative 1, so that will give us our coordinate b. Uh, negative 2, negative 2. So we're going to x is negative 2, y is negative 2. So that will be our value c. 
d is negative 2, positive 3. So we're going to x is negative 2, and then up to positive 3. So that will be d. And then e is 0, 0, which is our origin point. So that's how we plot our points. Just remember, you want to think about always starting at the origin and then figuring out are you moving right or left. And then from there, you can figure out if you're moving up or down. All right. Graphing inequalities. So what we'll do here is set up a number line. So 9 is our important number, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the middle there. And then I'll just throw in some other numbers so we can get an idea of um, what values we're seeing. And just remember, it should always be increasing as you read left to right. That's how it should always work. So here we're saying y is less than or equal to. So we have equality, which means a symbol that we want to use is either that um, square bracket, but then it just depends on what direction we're going in. So we want less than 9, so we want everything to the left-hand side here. And then at 9, we'll use a square bracket, and we just have it pointing to the left-hand side. So it's containing 9 and everything to the left. Um, for m is more than negative 3, so more than. So we don't have equality here, which is where we'll use the parentheses symbols. And just to get a number line, I'll put negative 3 there, and then increasing as we read to the right, so going up to 0, and then as we read to the left, it's decreasing. So more than negative 3, so we want the larger value, so we'd go off to this right-hand side, and then we have parentheses, and we just want that facing to the right. With this one here, we have a little bit of solving to do first. Again, we treat it just like an equation, just the special rule that if we multiply or divide by a negative number, we need to flip the sign. But what we'll do here is move our variable to one side. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So we'll have a 5x minus 3 is less than 2. Add 3 to both sides. So that we'll have this 5x less than 5 and then divide both sides by 5, and we're dividing by a positive, so we don't need to flip the sign, so it's x less than a positive 1. So this is what we actually want to end up graphing. So I'm going to make 1 as my main number, and then 2, 3, 4, 0, negative 1, negative 2, just see some numbers coming through. So we're looking for less than 1, so that'll have us going to the left-hand side. And then, since we don't have equality, we'll be using the parentheses symbol. So that makes our graphs. All right, completing a table and then making our graph. So to complete the table, what we need to do is plug in these values for x. So this 2x minus 5 is giving us this structure to follow. So for each of these, it's about plugging in different numbers for x and then solving. So with each of these, we'll be plugging in different x values, and we'll use just the values given to us, so negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then we simplify down. So this will be a negative 4 minus 5. So what we're graphing there is negative 9. Here is a negative 2 minus 5. So what we'd be graphing there is a negative 7. Uh, this will be a 0 minus 5. So what we'd be graphing there is a negative 5. And then this is a 2 minus 5, which would give us negative 3. And then 4 minus 5, which is a negative 1 and 6 minus 5, which is positive 1. 
And with this, we end up with a bunch of coordinates, negative 2, negative 9, negative 1, negative 7, so on and so forth. It just takes a bit of work to find that y coordinate. So what we're going to do is plot those points. So I have my grid here, I'll have my x-axis, my y-axis, and I'm just going to use a scale of 1. So I have the point negative 2, negative 9, which will be right there, and then negative 1, negative 7, 0, negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, positive 1. And then what we'll do is to finish the graph is connect those points. And just want to do that with a straight edge of some sort. Um, during the exam, if you want to bring a ruler, you can do that. Um, if you want to use like your ID card or something like that, you can use it. But it's nice to draw with a straight line so that if in the middle of this graphing, I actually had plot a point out there, that would be a hint that mathematically something went wrong on the table because we should be getting the straight line out that can be connected with a straight edge. All right. Then our last problem on this no calculator section is being given a graph and finding the equation of the line. So what we want to do is fit this y equals mx plus b form. So some things we need to find is our y-intercept, which is usually the quickest to find since it's a coordinate on the graph. And that's usually. The key is here they're showing us our y-intercept right there. And that's happening at the coordinate 0, negative 6. So what that tells us for our y-intercept is that b, the number that we would use, is negative 6. Now to find slope, what we'll use here is we have two coordinates. We have that 0, negative 6, but we also have this negative 6, 0. So what we can use is that equation for slope where we take the difference in the y values and then divide that by the difference in the x values. So for m, we'll have this y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And what we we'll use are the two coordinates. So let's go ahead and call, let's call this one x1, y1, and this one x2, y2. It really doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Um, so y2 is negative 6, and then we'll go minus y1, which is 0, divided by, and then x2 is 0, and x1, so minus, and then negative 6. And when you have those negatives, be extra careful with your parentheses, because part of the structure of slope is that you always have subtraction. So it's going to end up here is we'll actually have in the numerator negative 6 minus 0 is just negative 6, and then in the denominator, it ends up actually being a 0 plus 6 because we have that negative. So we have this negative 6 over 6, so our slope is negative 1. So once we have that, we can just plug into our equation, y equals negative 1x, or you could just write negative x, and then b is negative 6, so minus 6. And when you get to this point, just double check that it makes sense meaning check that if your slope is negative, make sure your graph is in fact decreasing as you read left to right. Because if I ended up with a positive slope, that would suggest something doing this, and that would show me that some of my work is wrong. And then when you see the y-intercept so at negative 6, just make sure that's where you're crossing the y-axis. So that's the no calculator section of our practice exam. In the next video, I'll go through the calculator section.